Hello and welcome to another Modrill video. This, in this video we're going to call, cover uh, the engine ECU capacitor repair. So I have to give credit to um, John D and his To The Garage website uh, because he's got a great article there for, uh, supplied by Matt Arnold. Where he's got a little crib sheet where it shows all the details of how he repaired his ECU. And uh, so this video will go into how we repaired ours with a bit more detail. Now the reason we're, we've had to do this ourselves is that uh, this summer our car went into limp mode. Now the car went in, uh, said it had an engine malfunction and the went into limp mode, uh, had restricted performance and it was clearly missing. Um, you could tell that the car was underpowered even in restricted performance. Sometimes the car can feel perfectly okay. It's just revs limited, but in this case, it did sound like it was rough. Um, when I put my cheap Chinese uh, Ford um, uh, scanner on, I got the codes, uh, and I'll show you here, P0352, 353, 355, 358, and 1368. I did initially uh, jump to the wrong conclusion that these codes were all bank two and uh, I actually swapped, swapped out the two ignition modules for bank one and two, trying to see if the, uh, the error swapped banks. But on closer examination, the codes uh, involve both bank one and bank two coil packs, plus uh, one of the coil uh, bank two's ignition module. And when you look at the firing order, it's not in any sequence whatsoever. It's basically these codes are completely random other than the fact they're, they're all ignition related. So then, uh, making a few inquiries on the web uh, and through contacts in the XK community, Jared Boo, thanks Jared for your suggestion, he'd had a is similar issue with his car where he'd had uh, the uh, random codes pop up and he said it was uh, accentuated by temperature. And what was interesting, uh, on my drive where the error occurred, it was okay on the way to my destination, but on the way back when the car was hot, these issues uh, popped up. Gerard uh, suggested that on his car, the issue turned out to be the capacitors, these little devils on the ECU board. Obviously the ECU is a little mini computer and there's lots of uh, components on there, but the capacitors are the probably ones that are the most likely to wear out. And in his case, the capacitors have started leaking and shorting out the circuit board. And he'd actually found that replacing them with new ones fixes issues. So I thought we'll give that a go. So in the tools you're gonna to need then are obviously a soldering iron with some solder and flux, but also you can need a few screwdriver, a cross, a wide flat, and a T25 Torx, but also a 10 millimeter spanner. The capacitors you're going to need, there are a total of seven in the ECU of four different types, and those types are listed here. You'll probably end up ordering more because of the minimum order quantity, but it's always a good idea because you might break the legs of some or bend them. So uh, don't worry about it, and they're very, very cheap. The removal of the ECU then. So first of all, take your 10mm spanner and disconnect the battery obviously negative terminal first. Open the bonnet. Under the bonnet you'll see the bulkhead covers. Uh, this is the right hand drive. Uh, obviously the left hand drive has the ECU on the opposite side. The ECU housing you can see there is underneath that cover and is actually obscured by the windscreen scuttle. So you need, need to remove the windscreen scuttle completely. Now I've covered that in a separate video, I'm not going to cover it here. There'll be a link in the top right hand corner if you want to take a look at how to do that. It's relatively simple. The ECU cover has six screws of two types. The red ones shown here are the anti-tamper six uh, M6 by 20, but also uh, two T25 Torx. Obviously you need the wide flat screwdriver to remove the anti-tamper and the T25 torque uh, screwdriver to remove the other screws. 
Now those security anti-tamper screws are quite difficult to remove, obviously because they're anti-tamper and they've got slopes on, but also they're quite deep uh, uh, underneath uh, the housing there. Once you've got them off, um, we'll go into the details of how to get those anti-tamper ones off in a moment. You need to remove the front cover. The rear cover has actually um, a little hose attached uh, for ventilation. You need to squeeze the end and pull it out to remove that. It's actually part of the cooling system for the ECU system. Now there's a cover underneath there actually which actually locks all the connectors onto the ECU so they cannot be unplugged by accident. Unfortunately these are also secured with anti-tamper screws. You need to remove all four of those top screws to unplug the ECU. Now this is how I advise trying to remove these anti-tamper screws is actually to get your wider sc screwdriver and punch push as hard as you can against those tapered edges. Ideally once you've got this unit out you could hacksaw those edges flat but it's very very difficult to do in a car if not impossible. Once you've got that out please persevere with those anti-tamper screws. That cover could be, could be slid out of the way and removed. Then you can get access to all the uh, plugs and sockets uh, that are linked into the ECU. You need to unlock them one by one and pull them out. Then the ECU can be removed from the vehicle. Opening the ECU. Unfortunately, there's two of those uh, brackets still attached at this point with those anti-tamper screws. So you need to get rid of those. Once you've got your ECU out, you need to remove the four screws from the corners of the lid. If you remove the lid then, it just flips off. There's no sealant on this. It just comes straight off. It reveals the capacitors. So there's one large one here. There's a small one, two medium size, another one, another one, and that's a, another one underneath this PCB. Now to get at that one, you need to remove these five screws and this will actually pivot up. With the five screws removed, this PCB actually will come out of the way and you can see the, the remaining capacitor there. Obviously you need to be careful not to break the ribbon. Now obviously to access all the solder on these components you need to look at the reverse of this board. If we just flip this over, it'll actually remove the lower cover already. You can see on the reverse all the, the uh, contacts and the solder joint. So if I turn this all the way over So what you've got to do, if I turn it over on its side again, I actually did it with the help of a friend. So you have, say this capacitor at the start here, uh, at the sorry, top corner, you can spot the terminals on the other side. So you need to get your soldering iron on the terminals and get a colleague to grab hold of the capacitor and pull it out very gently. And obviously, you can only do one leg at a time, so you need to alternate between each leg. So here's an example of uh, this replacement capacitor from the corner. And you can see here that the legs are extremely long and uh, the negative lead is shorter. It's always shorter. And you need to make sure you've got the polarity right. It is actually shown on the circuit board. I don't know if you can see that. Obviously the stripe is negative and there's a little negative symbol on the circuit board. So you need to make sure that's right. So what, I, what we did with the help of a friend, we soldered the longer one in, partially in, and then introduced a shorter one and then basically uh, went from one side to the other and worked the, uh, the component in to the circuit board. It took us roughly, I don't know, one and a half, two hours Obviously, as we went along, we got better at soldering and it got easier, but it's not a massive task. The one under here is a little bit tricky, but you can do it. 
there's enough room to pull it out and put a new one in. I've used some uh, specialist contact cleaner just uh, underneath all the capacitors just to make sure everything's uh, clean. Hopefully that, just to make sure there's no uh, bridging of the tracks with the gunk that was left over. Out of the seven capacitors, there were three that we found uh, with some issues. So I don't know whether you can see on this one. This one, the large one in the corner here, um, that seems to have some sort of gunk on one leg starting to come out of the capacitor. It wasn't obvious of whether the capacitor is that way. Couldn't see anything, but it's starting to weep. Um, these two, which actually are these two here, one was uh, weeping quite badly. This one actually was one leg was weeping, and when we uh, tried to remove it, the leg actually came off altogether. But the other one, I don't know if you can see that, it's weeping quite a lot, both legs. There's a gunk coming out of it. I think that was this one. Uh, we've cleaned up the circuit board now. The circuit board was quite gunky. I'll show you a picture of that now, um, how it was. It was actually a picture taken from this side. But there you go. So out of the, uh, the seven capacitors, the four smaller ones seem to be okay. These medium sized and large ones seem to have issues building up. So hopefully it'll fix our um, our uh, random ignition code issue. But either way, these capacitors needed to be changed. And out of precaution, we've changed all seven because you can't tell really from the top until it's out, whether it's any good or not. But also I need to check the cooling fan that sits underneath the ETU is also working because it could be that, I suppose. So I'm just going to connect this up to the uh, an old battery. Oh, there you go. That cooling fan is definitely working. So it's not that. Hopefully, it, the capacitors have changed. So there you go. That's how we repaired our uh, ECU. There were uh, capacitors that were uh, showing signs of wear, so it's obviously worth doing. I have started the car, the car runs fine, so we haven't broken anything. Only time will tell if the heat-related issue is still there. So I need to take it out for a, a run and uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, it won't reoccur. But either way, those capacitors did need changing. Anyway, hope you found that interesting. If you've got a, a random... Uh, set of codes keep popping up every now and again this might be something you need to look at thanks very much for watching please like comment share and subscribe for more xk videos bye bye